Go to Matthew 14, verse 22. And straightway, Jesus constrained his disciples to get into a ship and to go before him unto the other side while he sent the multitudes away. So he got the disciples out of there and said, go to the other side, I'll meet you there, And while he was sending the multitudes away. And so, you know, notice, and when he had sent the multitudes away, he went up into a mountain apart to pray. And when the evening was come, he was there alone. But the ship was now in the midst of the sea, tossed with waves, for the wind was contrary. And in the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went unto them, walking on the sea. And when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled, saying, It is a spirit. And they cried out for fear. But straightway Jesus spoke unto them, saying, Be of good cheer. It is I. Be not afraid. Now, hold right here. Notice he's on a mountain praying. Fourth watch of the night. He's still awake. There's no mention he ever slept. Not at this point. So he's been preaching all day. He sends his disciples away. Then he sends a multitude away. Who knows how long that took? Because sometimes it's hard to get rid of people. Get them to go home, right? And then he goes up to pray. He's there, fourth watch of the night. His disciples are in a boat, and there's a storm. So he goes down, and he starts walking. Now get this. He catches up to them. He's moving faster than the boat on the water. Now, But now notice, in the first illustration in Matthew 8, it says they were all in the boat together. Now, these are two separate situations, obviously. But in the first one, he was in the boat. And he gets up and takes command of the situation. Why? Because the boat was about to sink. Is that right? The waters were flooding over into the boat. The waves were coming over into the boat. His disciples, fishermen, all their life, come and say, we're perishing. They, okay, when fishermen say we're about to sink, they probably know. Right? And Jesus gets up and says, peace be still. He used his authority to protect his life and the lives of of his disciples. He wasn't just trying to calm a sea. He was protecting lives. Then back in Matthew 14, verse 26, and when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled, saying, it's a spirit, and they cried out for fear. Verse 27, but straightway Jesus spoke unto them, saying, be of good cheer. It is I, be not afraid. And Peter answered him and said, Lord, if it be thou, bid me come unto thee on the water. Verse 29, and he said, come. And when Peter was come down out of the ship, he walked on the water to go to Jesus. Now, first off, notice what Peter said. Lord, if it be you, bid me come. So he put Jesus in a tight spot. In other words, he had, Jesus had to tell him to come. Why? Because it was him. He said, if it's you, he, he didn't say, yeah, it's me, but stay there. He didn't say that. Peter created his own situation. He said, if it's you, tell me to come to you. Now, I don't know where he got that idea, but he must have thought, that'd be cool. I'm going to get out of the boat, walk on water. I mean, think about that. Here, he said, if, if it's you, bid me come to you. And Jesus said, come. And so he gets out and he walks on the water. Man. Now, notice it says, he said, come, and he walked on the water to go to Jesus. Now, notice he was going to Jesus, so he was far enough off that he had to walk some. But when he saw the wind boisterous, he was afraid, and beginning to sink, he cried, saying, Lord, save me. Now, notice back over here, he just said he's going to the middle. He was, Jesus was walking up to the boat. Now, guess what? The storm is still going on. Jesus didn't sit on the mountain and go, storm. Talking to you, peace, be still, and everything calmed down. No, he went in the middle. He had, okay, this is going to sound really weird, okay, if I, if I say it all. When you have peace, and you're walking in faith, and you have no fear, and you know that's not how you're going to die, and you know that nothing shall by any means hurt you, you don't always have to calm the storm. You just know you're going to go right on through it. Right. 
And, and, and honestly, other people will notice your storm more than you do. Why? Because you're in faith and you're walking. And other people go, man, look at, look, at, look at what's going on in their life. Look at this problem. Look at that problem. Look at this thing. man. Get, and yet the person in the problem is oblivious. Why? Because his shield is taking all the hits. Not him. Do you get this? See, now there's times when you have to calm the storm. There's other times you go, man, this ain't no big deal. Why? Because this ain't how it's going to end. And you just keep on going. Now, you say, well, when's, when, when do you do which? It's up to you. Now, if you start to get into fear, you might want to start commanding the, the storm before you really get into fear. Why? Because you might want that to, to, to move away. This was obvious. Now, notice what, what he said here. And this is a funny thing, and I know you've probably heard it before. But it says, but when he saw, okay, now he was going to Jesus, so he was looking at Jesus. When he saw the wind boisterous, he was afraid. What does that mean? He was looking at circumstances, and he let circumstances decide his faith condition. He was afraid, now watch, and beginning to sink. Notice, notice the process. He looked at the wind, became afraid, began to sink. You see, that's the process. But if you were to, now, this is for a modern situation, don't look at the wind. Why? Who was he looking to? Jesus. I mean, who was he looking to at first? Jesus, right? So he was looking at Jesus. Then he got his eyes off of Jesus, got his eyes on the wind, as if the wind made a difference as to whether he could walk on water or not. I mean, I would think, it, it, honestly, I would think it should have said, and he looked at the waves and realized all the stuff was going on because it was the waves he was walking on, right? But he looked at the wind, which had, I mean, obviously it makes the waves pretty rough, but honestly it doesn't matter whether you're, you know, the wind and the waves, doesn't matter whether you can walk on the water or not. But it said he began to look, and the, he looked at, look at this, he looked at the wind, got his eyes off Jesus, became afraid, started to sink. But instead, if you look at the word, the things which are not seen, if you don't look at the wind, you keep your eyes on Jesus, right? Then guess what? You're not going to go into fear and you won't start to sink. Do you get that? But now, if you get your eyes off Jesus and you start to look at the storm, you're going to sink. It's, it's just that simple. So you decide, what am I going to look at? Am I going to look at the storm or am I going to look at the word? Am I going to look at Jesus? Why? Because this is the Word made, Jesus' Word made flesh. This is the Word. This is Jesus to me. Amen? Are you with me so far? 